Hello everyone. Welcome to the Pack Info channel. Before we get started make sure to like and share this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Prime Minister, how are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. Jonathan, you're in steamy Islamabad? You're about to interview the Prime Minister, Imran Khan, a former cricket star. Pakistan is squarely in the sights of the Biden administration right now. America is going to completely withdraw its military from Afghanistan by September the 11th. The question of whether it could have really direct impacts on whether terrorism flourishes again in Afghanistan and ultimately comes back to hit America at home. Prime Minister Khan, the US military is finally withdrawing from Afghanistan after 20 years. Are you happy about that? Happy in one way, because there was never going to be any... Without a political settlement, there's a possibility of civil war. What would a political settlement look like in your mind? A political settlement in Afghanistan uh, would mean a sort of a coalition government, a government from the Taliban side and the other side. There is no other solution. Do you think the Americans made a mistake by saying we're getting out by September the 11th? Difficult, you know, they, were, they got themselves, they have got themselves in such a big mess. They had to give some sort of time frame. Prospect of the Taliban effectively controlling Afghanistan. Are you happy to welcome them into the community of nations? As far as Pakistan is concerned, whoever represents... Does it not concern you on some level that, that this group of people is, is accumulating power right next door to you? Look, I'm not a spokesman for Taliban. For me to say, you know, what they are doing or what they shouldn't be doing is pointless. In case Taliban go for an all-out victory, there is going to be incredible amount of bloodshed. And let we have three million Afghan refugees here. And this could lead another exodus. So that is our biggest concern. The Americans, before they leave, there must be a, a settlement. Let's talk about the relationship with the United States. Um, the American CIA director, Bill Burns, made an unannounced visit here to Islamabad between the between our intelligence agencies. Did you meet with him? No, I didn't. Did anyone from your administration? Uh, I, yes, our, our uh, head of ISI. He's here in Pakistan to keep an eye on what's happening across the border. Will you allow the American government to have CIA here in Pakistan uh, to conduct? Absolutely not. There's no way we're going to allow Seriously? any bases, uh, any sort of action from Pakistani territory uh, into Afghanistan. Absolutely not. Pakistan suffered 70,000 casualties more than any other country by joining the American war. We cannot afford any more military actions from our territory. We will be partners in peace not in conflict. The American military right now is, is discussing doing airstrikes potentially to support the Afghan forces against the Taliban. Would you allow the American Air Force to use your airspace for those airstrikes? We are not going to be part of any conflict anymore. But you haven't decided... ...discuss this. You know, why would the Americans be using bombing Afghanistan to... after? It hasn't worked for 20 years. Why will it work again? Have you spoken to him? He can speak to me, but at the moment, clearly, he has other priorities. What would you say to him if you had a meeting with him? The US has a big responsibility. Most powerful nation in the world. This is a 
uh, almost 1.4 billion people living in the subcontinent. We are held hostage. One dispute in Kashmir, a disputed territory, according to the Kashmir, to decide about their own future. That has never taken place. It's festering. It can easy if the Americans have the resolve, the will. Nuclear arsenal anywhere in the world. I don't Why? think. I don't. I don't know where they've come up with this. Pakistan's nuclear arsenal is simply as a deterrent to protect ourselves. Because, really? uh, uh, as far as I know, our nuclear the only one purpose. It's not an offensive thing. Any country which has a neighbor seven times the size as Pakistan has would be worried. Is your goal vis-a-vis -vis India and Pakistan nuclear disarmament? I'm completely against nuclear arms. I always have been. We've had three wars against India. And ever since we've had nuclear deterrent, we have had no war between the two countries. We have border skirmishes, but we've never faced war. The moment there's a settlement on Kashmir, I believe the two neighbors will live as civilized people. We will not need to have uh, uh, these nuclear deterrents. Last year, you wrote an open letter to leaders of Muslim states, asking them to unite against Islamophobia, particularly in the West. Why did you feel the need to write that public letter? societies. It happened after 9-11, when the word Islamic terrorism came into currency. The moment you say Islamic terrorism, the man in the street in the West thinks that there's something in Islam which leads to terrorism, or Islam causes radicalism. And after 9-11, any time some terrorist act went on where a Muslim was involved, the entire 1.3 billion Muslims started becoming targets. Just across your border in Western China, the Chinese government has imprisoned more than one million Uyghur Muslims in re-education camps. The Chinese government has tortured Muslims, forcibly sterilized them, and they've destroyed mosques in Xinjiang and also punished Muslims for fasting, praying, even giving Muslim names to their children. Prime Minister, why are you so outspoken about Islamophobia in Europe and the United States, but totally silent about the genocide of Muslims in Western China. What uh, our conversations have been with the Chinese, this is not the case, according to them. The evidence is just overwhelming. Whatever issues we have with the Chinese, we speak to them behind closed doors. China has been a great, one of the greatest friends to us in our most difficult times, when we were really struggling our economy was struggling, China came to our rescue. So we respect the way they, they are. And whatever issues we have, we speak behind closed doors. How come this is such a big issue in the Western world? Why are the people of Kashmir ignored? It is much more relevant compared to what might be going in the Uyghurs. 100,000 Kashmiris have been killed. There are 800,000 Indian troops, which have literally, it's an open prison in Kashmir. Nine million Kashmiris are put there. Why is that not an issue? It's so I think it's hypocrisy. They've been a huge partner to you, China. But on some level, doesn't it make you feel sick to have to be quiet because of all this money they're putting mm -hmm. into Pakistan? Afghanistan. Am I going to start talking about everything? I concentrate on what is happening on my border, in my country. This is on your border. Which is, which is part of, no, that is part of Pakistan. 100,000 Kashmiris are dying. That concerns me more because half of Kashmir is in Pakistan. This is a grotesquely large human rights atrocity. I would... First of all, I'm not sure about that because our conversations, imagery. our conversations with the Chinese, this is not the picture sure that comes that. from that side. So just to put a fine point on this, you are not in any way concerned about the Muslim Uyghurs. ...epidemic of sexual violence and rape in Pakistan. And you acknowledged the seriousness of the problem and you talked about Pakistan's strict laws. You were also quoted as saying that the practice of women wearing veils, quote, is to stop temptation, 
Not every man has willpower, you said. On increasing vulgarity, it will have consequences. And you were accused of rape victim blaming. How do you respond to that? It is such nonsense. I never said veils. Uh, this was never said. I said the, the, the concept of parda. Concept of parda is avoid temptation in the society. We don't have discos here. We don't have nightclubs. So it, it is a completely different uh, society way of life here. So if you raise... ...consequences in the society. Do you think that what women wear has any effect, that, that that's part of this temptation? If a woman is uh, uh, ve wearing very few clothes, it will have an impact on the men, unless they're robots. I mean, it's common sense. Uh, yes, but is it really... I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.